Welcome back. We are continuing our work on a proposed amendment to H183. And I just want to make sure that I understood uh, Wilda White's uh, testimony. Uh, and so Wilda, if you are available, um, I know that your camera has been freezing. So if you could, um, you don't have to turn your camera on, but if I, oh, okay. Well, great. Thank you. But feel free to turn it off if it if it does freeze again. So um, we heard some conversation about, um, I know at first when you testified, you spoke about taking um, in uh, 10C on line 17 of the first page, um, removing the word mental. And then also on the second page, um, removing on line six, the word mentally. And then um, we heard, um, testimony from the um, state's attorney's office and the attorney general's office concurred that um, they uh, would prefer to leave the word mental in on first page line 17, but okay to, um, to remove it on the second page. And I think I heard you say that you would, would defer uh, to them on that, that it's not your, um, wasn't your first choice, but that you would defer. So I want to make sure I'm not mischaracterizing your deference. <laughs> um, since we since we worked with you um, to get this far, so. So I don't know the exact words I used, but what I meant to convey was that uh, in the spirit of compromise, I can accept leaving the word mental in on 10C. And I uh, appreciate that they, they see the wisdom of removing mentally from uh, 6A. Okay, yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so Michelle, thank you. I was wondering if you could weigh in in terms of how that, um, if we were to do that, so to leave um, like um, the word mental in on page, um, on line 17 on the first page of the amendment, but removing it um, actually from current law on uh, the second page of the amendment on line six. Uh, how that works in terms of drafting or, or uh, yep. any, any so I would there. recommend that if you're going to take the word mentally out in subdivision six I would also take out subdivision b um, because what you're doing is you're making a just be a, a, a generic statement or that the person knew or reasonably should have known that the other person was incapable of consenting so it just doesn't, it's a little odd to then have kind of essentially the same language in the next one and say the same thing, but say physically incapable. So I think you just, you, uh, you strike A and B and then just have a general statement about incapable of consenting. So just for clarity, you mean six, you're talking six A and six B and the second page? Yes. Okay. Yep. And, and, and also for clarity, did you say strike 6A and 6B or just 6B? I would just, I would rewrite a new one. I'd write a new A and then I'd re-letter and reorganize. But A and B, A is on based on mental capacity. B is on physical capacity. If you're going to take out mental, might as well take out physical and then just do a general. You just froze, uh, Michelle. I can't tell because I can see myself talking. Can you see me talking? <laughs> you're, you're, back, you're, you're back now. Um, so is that um, is, is that because the definition includes mental and then separately physical uh, for the definition of incapable of consenting? Well, it is encompassed there, but I also, if you just if you if you imagine that what A would now say is new or reasonably should have known that the other person was incapable of consenting. I don't know that there's a say new or reasonably should have known that the other person was physically incapable of consenting because A will encompass B. And by having B, you're insinuating, but not saying specifically that A is mental. You got it? Do you know what I'm saying? Are you following me or am I? not explaining myself well. 
Can I can I follow up, uh, Chair, Madam Chair? Uh, yeah, I guess. Would you still? I guess the, what's a little bit different is the language as far as the capable of resisting. I, I mean, I see that the, the capable of, of incapable of consenting to. But are we losing that component of this as far as the capable of resisting as opposed to declining consent? Um, yeah, I mean, you can add in to 10B the resisting if you want to add that in there. Um, incapable of declining participation in communicating or resisting. Um, I mean, I would say that the, under the existing, under 6B there, the way that it's drafted now, Michelle, you you froze again, and we can't also can't hear you. Um, we lost Michelle. Hmm. There you are. There she is. She's back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we um we both froze and couldn't hear you. And I I'm also wondering what it does because because right now the definition, you know, and in, in 10 on the first page and then and then second page where we where it's broken out, they're somewhat you know parallel and so what happens when we when you condense them all into one and take those out i don't know if that matters or not but also we didn't hear what you were what you were saying before i think we missed some of it can't hear you can you hear me now Yes, yeah. Sorry. Um, sorry, my internet keeps going in and out. I can go yell at my kids to get off their devices <laughs> if it happens again. Um, so, uh, you know, if you want to add the, in, the physically incapable of resisting, you can put that up in 10B. Uh, if you feel as though that doesn't, is, is that the 10B language about physically incapable of declining participation in? or resisting or communicating unwillingness to engage in. So if you wanna add the word resisting in there, I would do it there. But to me, to just have the general catch-all in A and then have B, you know, but I realize sometimes as a drafter, things are feel awkward to me, but it feels important to people, other folks who are reading it that, that might feel as though it's they want it in there. So I'll certainly take your lead. I think it's it's not. Um, I think you could leave be the way that it is, but it would just be my recommendation to condense it. Okay. Thank you. Um, no, if. Um... See, state's attorneys, uh, Rory. I don't know if you have any have any thoughts. We could also let Michelle draft it and actually have something to look at, which might be easier. But just in terms of prosecuting cases, I think Rory might also be frozen. <laughs> Rory's just down the street from me, so we're probably on the same on the same internet provider. So Michelle, tell your kids to get off their devices so Rory can get on here. <laughs> hmm.
So, so if uh, Michelle, if it's redundancy that you're worried about, the the other option, if we get rid of mentally, and just have a six A as a catch-all, <clears throat> is just to strike or declining consent to, um, and leaving B in there just for that physical resistance as opposed to the declining to consent, you know, to be able to communicate consent. I don't know. I, I'd rather hear from Rory, but that would be one other option. Sure. Yeah, I think it distinguishes it enough that you could do that as well. Because I, yeah, I, I see that the resistance is a little bit of a different animal than than declining participation, be it uh, because you're mentally or physically unable. And that's really what 6A seems mm -hmm. to be going through, where physical resistance is a little bit of a different animal. But again, really defer to where Rory is on this. Thank you. Rory. So I apologize, I just had some connectivity issues and had to reset. Um, so again, for the record, State Attorney Tebow. Um, so I, I thought that my recommendation would be, and I agree with Michelle, that you don't want to create surplus language in, in the statute. So um, eliminating 6B makes sense, but also then under the 10B definition, adding in resisting to make sure that there isn't the loss of that. So you're going to effectively communicate the same thing, but just consolidate in one place. Uh, what it really does is it makes 6A just a cross-reference back to all of the 3251 10 definition, which um, I think provides then again, one, one place rather than two where we're uh, expressing what the standard is. Thank you. Uh, Martin and um, any committee members also in, in addition to Martin, please let us know if you have questions for Rory or Michelle. So just a follow up question for Rory and, and we need that incapable of consenting really for what is currently the subsection 6D, correct? I mean, that that's... Correct. All right, thank you. Okay, any, um, any other questions? Committee members, uh, Wilda, did you have a... Make sure you don't have a, a question. I don't have a question. I, I okay. think the bill continue to get, continues to get better. So, okay, great. Well, thank you. So, how about Michelle? If we um, give you a chance to to draft this, so that way we have something to look at. I think it's easier. Um, the bill, as I said, is in appropriations, so um, so we don't have to vote on this amendment right now this afternoon. Um, so Michelle, would, could we have something to look at tomorrow morning or, or, or we could have something sure. late, you know, no to, problem. Something to send out and yeah. Yeah, um, so I, I need some direction from, from y'all about whether or not you want me to try to keep 6B and amend that, or whether you want me to do a consolidated A and then add resisting into the definition. I think either can work. And I don't know if Rory heard uh, Martin's question on that, um, but. I, but Rory. No, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, unfortunately, when um, Representative Alon was speaking was when I, I cut out, and so I didn't hear some of that until I reconnected. I, I apologize. Um, I, I had sent him a message in the beginning of the conversation of uh, uh, what I thought uh, the fix could be. Yeah, so, I'm good either way. My, my suggestion, Rory, just was if you kept 6B, uh, you would just strike or declining consent from I'd be line nine on page two. And then 6B would really be about the physical resisting. And then the 6A would be about really the ability to consent, be it because of physical uh, or, or mental uh, issues. But I'm, I'm certainly fine with either, either way. I think that makes sense. And it might actually be then less, um, less heavy editing on what's presented. 
it's less it's less editing but i guess what i what i wonder is and i don't know i'm just stream of consciousness talking here so is that by having the not or physically incapable of resisting in 6d but not having it in 10b i don't know like i just there's a part of me that just wants to consolidate the the inability to physically consent or resist or decline and have it in one place Makes rather sense. than having it because remember these are you know you got your definition section and then 3254 has its own language um i just feel like it might be a little neater from a being able to find what you're looking for um but i, I don't feel strongly about that so <laughs> well just for you I, yeah, I would say that uh, I'm a practitioner. Uh, Michelle is the uh, legislative construction expert, and that is a much more, uh, that is a really compelling reason, I think, to do as she just suggested. Okay, great. Thank you. So, so why don't we do that? And then, um, and then Michelle, let us, um, you know, let us know when, when you have something and we can get it posted. And yeah, I'll work on it um, a little later this afternoon and I'll get something out to um, Evan either tonight or early in the morning. So just, uh, and I do have um, some time. I don't know what your schedule is tomorrow, um, but my schedule has been moving around a lot and I do have some time at the beginning of the morning. Um, uh, so uh, anywhere, I think from 9.30 to 11, so. Okay, so yeah, I think it would be more around the 1045-ish um, because we have a, an out-of-state witness that is uh, presenting at nine, so. Yeah, I think I'm going up, uh, I still say up, but um, I am going to appropriations with uh, Selena on 183 at 11, but, um, but as long as we could knock it out before then. Okay, yeah, why don't we do it at, uh, Actually, why don't we say uh, 10.30? Does that work? Works for me. Great. Evan, would you mind sending me an invite? Okay, great. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody.